Rutgers won the toss to further to the second half. So we will see Iowa on offense to begin play today. Jude McIntomney to send this one away. Caden Weechin and Caleb Johnson back deep for the Hawkeyes. Low kick will go through the end zone. It's the guys around him, the O-line in the running game, have to step up. Deshaun Williams surpassed 1,000 career yards against the Wildcats. Here's Williams again, big hole. Down the sideline, Lee Sean Williams out of bounds inside the Rutgers 45. Williams for the season averaging five yards per carry. That one went for 24. Jazzy and Patterson, he takes a hit. That came, that this came about with injuries last week. It's Patterson again. Welcomes contact and drives across the 35. That back end of the secondary has to come up and get involved in run support today. On third and two, they fake the sweep. It's Patterson spinning. He's going to be about a yard shy. It's Hill up the middle, surging. And so far, Iowa is in rhythm. Six plays on this drive, all on the ground. Now the first pass from Hill rolls, throws, and Regaini is going to say incomplete. Again, tight end. That's been a banged up group all year long. On second down. Hill will take a shot looking towards the end zone and overthrows Ragaini. I will go into the win right now. Third and ten. Hill over the middle. That's caught. 47-yard try for the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week. And that's to the right. And that is no good. And the Rutgers offense, Kyle Manungai leads the Big Ten in rushing. His first carry cuts back. He's three pick sixes in all three of their losses so far this season. Manungai again. On the 40. Manungai picks up pressure, long throw, and that's caught. Wimson, plenty of time. He'll fire high, and that's incomplete. And that guy in second down. Still moving that lower half. And they will blow the whistles dead after a gain of about eight. Connor, thank you very much. Welcome to Kinnick. Iowa missed a 47-yard field goal on its first drive. Rutgers on the move, but now it'll be third and two. But Larry Smith is going to move. Start. Rutgers back five. Offense, number 21. Uh, more movement, and this crowd is making an impact already today. What was third and two, now third and 12. Menungai up the middle. Flint Appleby, the sophomore, to punt this one away for Rutgers. The Gene, fair catch, hauls it in. When Tyreen Powell went down, Muhammad, Muhammad Ture's role has increased, and he stepped up and made the most of it. LeSean Williams Jr. Iowa likely without Deontay Vines today. And we'll see if Jackson can't come back. It's Williams up the middle. Jazzy and Patterson, Richard freshman tailback, checks in for the Hawkeyes on third and two. Caleb Brown on the sweep. Brown lowers the shoulder pads and a first down. Gonna have to switch it up. It can't just be all lead power here with the fullback. It's Patterson. The other two are more physical. They can get those hard yards lower in their shoulders. Deacon Hill, that's tipped in the air and incomplete. 64 yards of offense so far. One pass yard. On third and six, Hill incomplete. The margin for error is slim. Guys around Deacon Hill need to step up. Mid-season All-American, Torrey Taylor boots it away. Dremel fair catch, and that ball's on the ground. It's live, and it's going to be recovered by the Scarlet Knights. But as you can see, he's out there. And here is Manungai, cuts it back and spun down after a gain of about four. He's the Big Ten and tackles, averaging almost 13 per game. Dremel in motion on second down. Manungai left side. Illegal snap. Offense, number 59. 
Lucid throws to the side. That's caught by Ian Strong. He breaks away from Jamari Harris. You saw the arm strength, too, on display there from Wimsett on a third down conversion. Manungai trying to bounce it outside. He does cut back. Wimsett is on run. Manungai wrapped up. At the 44. Nick Jackson, transfer from Virginia, second leading tackler on this Iowa defense, made the stop. Second time, Rutgers has been able to move the ball a little bit. They get into plus territory on the plus 50. And the second time, the Iowa defense has answered the bell, stiffened up and forced a fourth down. Greg Schiano and the Scarlet Knights will line up to punt once the second quarter begins. This After is the 15, end. no the score. Quarter. And now what began in 2017 continues every home fall Saturday. Let's enjoy the wave here in Iowa City. Took one punt back for a score here at Kinnick against Michigan State earlier in the season. Second punt from Appleby into the wind. And Jean, fair catch at around the eight yard line. Unified front, and it helps them to avoid giving up plays on, giving up scoring opportunities on one big play. And Iowa rushing attack, averaging 115 per game, 11 in the Big Ten. Williams. Hill, time open. That's caught by Williams. First down. Twice on third down, the O-line has stepped up. Twice on third down, Deacon has went to the running back. This time, Leeshawn Williams finished it with the catch. Now Williams on the ground and is smacked. That was a scoreless first half, by the way, against Northwestern. Almost 90 so far this half alone. Added to that, Estranga. Patterson. He left his feet and he was smacked back and I don't think he got there. Way to line up to go for it. Now they bring in the punting unit and Taylor does put it away. And it's a good punt for the midseason All-American and a fair catch. Samuel Brown the fifth. Now a tailback and Wimsett will throw open Dremel. It's loud. Wimsett changes up the play. Brown met by Higgins, and then Jackson came in to help out. That was power against power after a gain of three. Jay Higgins, that play remind me of the goal line stand last week. What makes a good linebacker is that point of contact. Do you get knocked back, or do you do the knocking back? Stuff Northwestern there, and. Stuck Rutgers at the point of contact right there. Numbers for Higgins last week named a midseason All American. Senior from Indianapolis. It's Brown again. Not much. One. Deontay Craig that time on the stop. Third down. Here's one thing to watch on third down. The quarterback run is alive. Wimsett's really the best part of his game is when he's on the run. Let's see what offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraka has dialed up on a third and six situation. Wimsett throws in. Incomplete. Machine as the crowd reacts. He's back at his own 35. False start. Kicking team number 89. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. This one will go out of bounds, and the Hawkeyes will have their best field position to begin any drive so far today. It's 
that empty formation once again. This has been one of the more successful pre-snap looks for Brian Ferentz in the Hawkeye offense. Good throw on the screen. That's caught by Caleb Brown. Sean Williams Jr. on second and four got away from Deion Jennings. But they put in the hard work and has now put the college football world on notice. That's quite the comparison, guys. My poor thanks. Keeper there from Hill. Certainly they're thinking seven points if they can get there. Drew Stevens miss the first drive, a 47-yard try on play action. Hill got away once, not twice, and then is thrown down by Aaron Lewis. His fourth sack this season, approaching nine now in his career. There is a flag down, a sack, and for now a loss of six. Holding defense, number 16. Well, play action, and Hill will check it down as Williams slips free. Williams upended inside the 25-yard line. First time either team has worked inside the opposition's 30 yard line. It's Williams. And he's dragged down. Williams. Flip Dixon did walk off on his own. This is a third down and one for the Hawkeyes. And Hill will keep it himself. Hey, this is a top 10 matchup. These guys work year round for an opportunity to prove themselves and compete for titles. Hill will throw, and that's caught by Nico Ragaini. Ragaini against Robert Longerbeam is down near the 13-yard line. And they feel like they're the best team in the country and did a good job of showing that on the field today against Penn State. It's Williams. It felt like they had some extra juice for him today. Williams hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss by Deion Jennings. The Big Ten Special Team Player of the Week. And he drives this one just inside that right upright. One thing about Coach Kirk Ferentz is he has been the leader for su sustained Iowa Hawkeye success. He's just too important to this team on defense and special teams. Haven't seen him yet in offense. Now Rutgers down three. Wimson will throw open. That's caught by Johnny Langan. He'll lower that right shoulder on Harris and pick up a first down. And 16 defensive players selected in the last six NFL drafts. But none guy can't slip away from Jay Higgins. Pressure on Wimson, backpedals, throws, and that's caught. It's one third down conversion for the Scarlet Knights today. Wimson dancing in the pocket, long throw, and that's incomplete. Appleby. Eugene. No fair catch. And he's swarmed. I think what's so impressive to me is how this team has stuck together. Hill throws, that's caught. Estranga. Rutgers will get the ball first to begin the second half. Hill taking a shot, open, nice throw and catch to Seth Anderson, his eighth reception all year. The wind at his back. Hill is 7 of 7 passing the ball, and that's on target. Nico Ragaini perfectly throwing another Iowa first down. And spinning the rock the way he has here in the first half. Rutgers bringing pressure, and that's too high. No chance for Ragaini that time. As you mentioned earlier in the drive, 7 and 2. And that's dropped. Pressure coming. Hill steps up, throws, and that is caught. 17 seconds to go, and a sliding catch made by Caleb Brown. Underneath, I wonder if they get into a double move down here in the red zone. Hill looking right, throws dangerously, and it's picked off by Max Melton. His seventh career interception. Before that play, momentum was on Iowa's side, maybe to give his defense a bit of a break. Call that timeout. The next play, Hill is picked off, and the Hawkeyes cannot add on. It is a 3-0 game at halftime, and Rutgers will get the ball first to begin the second half. Fourth all-time meeting, Rutgers and Iowa. Rutgers has never defeated the Hawkeyes in program history and no return from Rochelle. Really should have never made that throw at all. That's one he certainly wants to have back, and that cost Iowa's offense some points. A great play by Max Melton. Nice catch here by 
Ian Strong only down three. Looks like Iowa's going to bring big time pressure here and leave everyone one on one out in the slot. Manungai. It's Manungai again. This time he is wrapped up by Logan Lee. On third down, it's Aaron Young. And extends the chains. Wimsick will throw wide open. That's caught. It's strong. Remember, Jaquay Jackson, he got knocked out early. Wide receiver for Rutgers with an injury. The Nungai tries the middle. Higgins, Castro, Jackson all say no. This is where Rutgers on third and short has hurt themselves with penalties. It's Manungai. He slipped and then was dragged back. He did not get it. Movement, and it happens again. False start. Offense. Mm. Number 21. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. In the conference in college football is one of my favorite places to play on the road because this crowd is engaged and loud. Eugene, fair catch. From the 14 yard line, Lee Sean Williams Jr. Williams now over 60 yards rushing. As Patterson now checks in, and Patterson picks up the first down. Hill drops back, taking a chance. Deep ball down the field and overthrows Caleb Brown. To Caleb Brown. There's Caleb Johnson with his second carry. All guys have been good on third down tonight. Hasn't been a strength this season. Pressure coming from Bailey. Hill rolls and throws and out of bounds. Second year joined Rutgers after being part of P.J. Flex staff in Minnesota. And a fair catch from Dremel for the Scarlet Knights in the mid 1960s playing both guard and linebacker. Sadly Major Lawrence was killed in 1968 when his aircraft was shot down in North Vietnam. His remains were recovered in 2011 and 43 years after he was lost. Here's the toss to Brown trying to cut back and he's brought down from behind. Wimson in the pocket, dangerously thrown incomplete. Appleby's been busy all night. With the wind at his back. DeGene angling back at a fair catch. Near the 20. A 46-yard punt. A chance today to take command of the West. Rutgers still in this game. Can they get to seven wins? Hill will throw over the middle and wide open. That's caught to the 25 yard line. Zach Ortworth, the freshman from St. Louis. 54 yards. Watch your fullback Addison Estranga come running out of the field. And then what you have is you've got number 48 sneaking right behind the linebackers off of play play action. A great job by Zach there to just get behind the defense and Deacon Hill hits him accurately to get him down into plus territory. First play of 25 yards or more for the Hawkeyes today. But now they go backwards. Ragaini with a loss. There's a lot a going four. on, Corey, on that last play. You know, you, what, what happens is, is when you run routes out of the backfield, that stresses the defense. So they sent Addison Estranga almost on like kind of a little wheel route. So once he comes out of the backfield, you got a heavy play action. Jazz gets just enough. You see right there, Deion Jennings is confused on which direction to go. The direction he needed to be was backwards. But he wasn't in place. A 54-yard strike, the longest of his career. And now throws quickly, but that's caught. Estranga was met immediately by Ture. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down at about 10 with under five to go in the quarter. 
Zach Ortworth, number 48. It's just opportunity, right? Eric All goes down. Luke Lachey goes down. You're without Stiliano. Addison Estranga got beat up in the first half. I guess the one thing we know about Iowa is they got tight ends on the <laughs> roster. Man. Never doubt that. Always have. Here's look at look at uh, look at Rutgers in a pressure look here, different than the first half versus empty. Hill steps up in the pocket, throws high, incomplete. Was looking for Anderson, no flag, and his fourth down. And look at Hill; he's kind of grabbing at his right hand there a little bit. Uh, as he followed through, he, his his hand connected. I don't know if it was another hand or a helmet. You know I'm saying it's, it's a good job by Deacon Hill this week of kind of staying present in the pocket. He's had some clean pockets, so watch him step up right here. And yeah, just Aaron Lewis is getting his hand in there to try to disrupt it. Deacon clearly made contact. The pocket has been clean for him today. From 43, that one moving around a little bit, but it is good. As long as the offense can get any type of points on the board, he feels this Hawkeye team can leave with the victory. Rutgers rarely returns kicks, and they will not do so here. They'll start to get his team in scoring position so they can capitalize with the field goal. First catch of his career, but now Rutgers down six from the 25. Winston in trouble. Ball came out. He got it back. And he's dropped for a loss back at the 18-yard line. That was Joe Evans off the edge and kind of reminiscent of what he did last week for first Northwestern. And he beats the tackle, Reggie Sutton. There comes Kyle Manungai for help. It didn't matter if there was two guys on him because Joe Evans gets around and reaches that big, long arm and that big paw out to make Wimsett feel uncomfortable in the pocket. Castro coming out of blitz. Wimsett steps up and will throw that one away. More pressure. Higgins Jackson coming out of blitz. Low throw incomplete. Dremel the intended target, but Quinn Schulte was there defensively and it's fourth down. I'll tell you, it's a dangerous game. Testing Iowa's secondary, right? Quinn Schulte was able to get his hand on that football. And, you know, oftentimes when the Hawkeyes back end is in that position. They come down with an interception. Schulte was on that out route by Christian Dremel. He saw it coming. He triggered on it and he was able to break it up. I mentioned Appleby's been busy. 218 yards worth of punts compared to the total offense today. And that one might have been partially tipped. It does bounce though back inside Hawkeye territory to the 46 yard line. He's Sean Williams Jr. with the carry, but the Scarlet Knights swarm. Ended up in an interception from Max Melton. Now the boot from Hill. He'll check it underneath. The Stranga. He'll work his way to the Scarlet Knights 46 yard line, setting up third down and short. And these boot actions, these naked actions, this is a huge part of the Iowa offense. Brian Farron said he just wants to simplify things for Deacon Hill. Don't get him thinking too much. Make sure he's confident in the pocket. That's where those play action plays come in handy. And in this situation, Iowa's leaned towards the quarterback sneak heavily throughout the game. Hayden Large is the fullback out of the eye. It's Patterson. And the freshman has the first down. He's come a long way. That's how Jazzy and Patterson described Deacon. You guys were just talking about him and the progress he's made since taking over the starting role. He said, listen, on the outside, people may not notice, but his teammates see the work he's putting in day in, day out. He's prepared, makes an effort to over-communicate with his teammates. Now Jazzy and said it's just about finding that confidence. And when he gets that, everything else will take off, guys. All right, Brooke, thank you. First down, Iowa. Here's Caleb Johnson hoping for some blocking and he'll pick up about two. That's a great point by Brooke. You know, in our meeting with Jazzy and Patterson yesterday, when we asked him about Deacon Hill, and that was his response and kind of what it what it hinted at. We also also asked him about the culture of this team, and he said, "Listen, we don't listen to any noise outside of these walls. This is a brotherhood. This is a family. 
They don't care what anyone says. They believe in Deacon Hill. He certainly said there's room for improvement. But what Jazzy and Patterson in his locker room like is he's willing to try. Quick hit to Ragaini. Ragaini with the first down inside the 30 yard line. Hill off play action. Yeah, that was caught by Patterson. A gain of two. He mentioned Patterson, Jake, and the word family, and that's a big part of who this young man is. He's 19 years old. He's the youngest of 16. 16. Eight brothers, eight sisters. He's 19. His oldest sibling is 41, his brother AC. And here's a young man that told us yesterday he likes to run hard and bring pain. Redshirt freshman. Former Navy pilot, veteran who died in 1943. Heisman Trophy winner, renamed Kinnick in his honor in 1972. Off play action, it's Hill rolling, throwing on target, finds Ragaini. Look, let's give credit to Brian Ferentz. He has done a great job of scheming routes and receivers open, making the picture very clean for Deacon Hill. As he came off that boot action, he had a couple options. Addison Stranga, Stranga was completely uncovered into the flat. Deacon Hill decided to go to his guy, number 89, Ragaini. But you have to credit Brian Ferentz for the way he's called this game today and simplified things for Deacon Hill. He's doing a great job of putting this offense in advantageous positions. Johnson, the tailback to his right. Here is Caleb Johnson. Inside the five, it's second down and goal. So the number one thing right here, yes, you want to score a touchdown, but the number one thing with the way your defense has played today is you cannot you have to avoid a turnover. Remember, down here is where they had the turnover going into the half. But if you can kick a field goal, make this a two-score game, a nine-point game, you feel great about the way your defense is playing. Of course, they're going to try to punch it in for a touchdown. And a timeout. Timeout, Iowa. Nice gesture by Fran of the guys earlier today. Second and goal. Patterson cuts back. Patterson spinning towards the goal line. Touchdown, Iowa. Going back to that touchdown, it was a great job by Jennings Dunker, Connor Colby. Tyler Ellsbury, the right side of that offensive line, was able to get hip to hip on their double teams and generate movement. Hill searching, throws, and it's caught. Two point try is good by Caleb Brown. Coming up, right? So you can see the turf, but with the shin, you know, you, know, you don't get the advantage of seeing that turf bounce. Exactly right. Look, I think he's short. I would not be shocked if this stands. That's how close these plays are. Here's the call from Larry Smith. After video review, it's been determined that the runner's shin was down with the ball short of the goal line. Therefore, the two-point conversion is no good. Clean, easy pictures to capitalize on. And a fair catch. One of the better stories in the conference. You know, he told us back at the, the Big Ten media days this team was going to fight. They were going to stay together. You know, a lot of coaches say that, but his team and his staff have proved that that's the identity they've adopted for this whole season. Winsett, time over the middle, throws high incomplete. Was looking for Isaiah Washington. Harris and DeGene in pursuit. It's second down. And he had him, as you see, right there in the middle of your screen. Ooh, Isaiah Washington, he, he was able to create some separation there on Cooper DeGene, which is very, very rare. Wimsett, this is just kind of this is kind of where he's at as a, quarter, as a quarterback. He'll make some really nice throws, as we saw at times in the first half, but then he'll just occasionally miss them when he's got the opportunity. Yeah, Wimsett hasn't run too often on his own today. He does so there on second down, picks up three. Wow. 
Kyle Manungai. What they, they love this quarterback power. So watch, watch Wimsett on the run, and then here comes Kyle Manungai, who is Officials down and hurt right now. Watch this. This is number five, lead blocking. Injury. Bam! That is a big time collision with Xavier Wumpa. Oh my goodness. That is a big time shot. And Manungai, we were told before the game today, was questionable to play, but he's been out there. Third and seven. Wimson not ready for the snap, and he'll dive on top of it. Corey, I have to imagine that that is the Iowa crowd once again. Wimson not ready for the snap. Gus Salinskis, the center, must have thought he heard something. But once again, that one of the MVPs of this day has been this Hawkeye home crowd who has showed up consistently on third down situations, making their presence felt and there, forcing an early snap by Gus Salinskis. Third down has been a problem for Rutgers all night long, either penalties and that time the crowd forcing. Snap that Wimson was not ready for it. A fair catch for DeGene after 50 after a 34 yard punt. We're back in a moment. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah, pretty much it's been a clean night for the Hawkeyes outside the one interception, 56 total plays, no penalties, no sacks allowed, only two negative plays. Go back to Brian Ferentz, man. Let's give him credit. Caleb Johnson. Gate of one. Again, I, I just think, you know, the, the the offense is what it is. You lose your star transfer quarterback, Cade McNamara. You lose your two star tight ends, two of the best in college football, probably your best weapons. And you know what Brian Ferentz has battled with is finding the the path that allows them the best chance to win. And sometimes that includes punting the ball and letting your defense take the field. Patterson, a little shimmy, little shake. Inside the 45-yard line. After a gain of five, uh, Lee Sean Williams Jr. hasn't seen many reps here this half. It's been Caleb Johnson, it's been Patterson. Both these defenses are so dang physical, man, right? It's, the young guy just went to the tent, Leshawn Williams, possibly dealing with something on the sideline. These are two of the best defenses in college football, and they do it really behind a brand of physicality. Off play action. Hill throws, that's caught. Estranga, first down. Inside the 40-yard line. That's a really nice scheme once again. There's a Strango off the ball. Watch this big time play action and you see kind of shuffles. It almost looks like he's starting to a double starting to get into a double team to start that play off. And Desmond Igmanosin is just a, a second behind on that. Has to respect the run that allows a Strango to get out open. Another great play call and another great scheme by Brian Ferentz. Hawkeyes have had a good night on third down. It's Patterson. Open up the middle and was tripped up by Rodgers. If not, had one man to beat. If he did that, that was going to be in the end zone. Watch the hole right there open up between 77, Connor Colby. You got some lead blockers. And I was done the better job of sustaining drives of keeping the Rutgers defense on the field and, and that matters over the course of four quarters. This is when you draw on that the Rutgers defense has played a lot of snaps. Patterson. And he should have the first down inside the 29 yard line. A gain of two for the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know, big picture right now with Nebraska losing today. Wisconsin's losing. Minnesota's losing, and if the Hawkeyes hang out here, Kirk Ferentz, at minimum, the Hawkeyes would clinch a share of the West Division crown tonight because of what took place earlier and what's taking place right now within yeah. this Big Ten West. 
Doesn't mean they clinch a spot for Indy, but would clinch at least a share of the West with a win tonight. As Hill throws and incomplete, can't find Ragaini. That is if Minnesota loses, which they are against Purdue, and Northwestern is blowing out Wisconsin right now in Madison. It, it leads me to a conversation. I think Greg Schiano is in the conversation of Big Ten Coach of the Year. We talked about Northwestern, maybe David Braun. I wonder if Kirk Ferentz should get more credit because I think a lot of the energy has been focused on the, the lackluster offense. But it takes discipline to know your team and to know, even again in the face of criticism, to understand what gives you the best chance of winning and staying true to that throughout the season. There's a lot of teams that would love to be seven and two with the chance now here in the fourth quarter to go eight and two. Patterson. Rutgers trying to rip that ball out, but Patterson hung on to the 21 yard line. They're just starting to find their rhythm. These are just fullback inserts at this point. Downhill, inside zone runs. Addison Estranga, number 87, has had a few key blocks on this drive. You can hear the pads cracking as Iowa is starting to find their rhythm in the run game. And look at the total yards for the Hawkeyes today. We mentioned how historically bad it has been, but not the case here tonight, as you said, against a very good defense. On the sweep, Caleb Brown. Brown inside the 10. That's near a horse collar tackle. And it's going to be first and goal for Iowa. The timing of that snap is so critical. You want to hit your receiver when he is on the run. And that, that oh, right? Let's watch it right here. There's the timing. You hit Caleb Brown. He's got the, the edge right away. And, you got a tug on the jersey, but no horse collar. And Dean Blandino helping us out there, saying no horse collar because the defender did not immediately rip Brown to the ground. And if Dean says it, that's the truth. Hill throws, that's caught, and tiptoeing that sideline is a string. He's out of bounds inside the five. Let's take a look at this one. And I'll present you the question. Could Addison Estranga be the next in line? He was going to play baseball here. Yeah. And he was a, an accomplished baseball player, but then took a chance. Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. He just impressed year after year at camp. Brian Ferentz yes. told us yesterday. And at some point, he said, look, we've made some mistakes not offering some guys with impressive camps. It was not going to happen again with that guy. He's a sophomore, so there's a lot of time for him to continue to grow in his game. Balls on the ground and Hill. There's a negative play. As Iowa with a touchdown here would pretty much put this one away. This is just this one's on Deacon. Just snap was clean. It's right in the numbers. You know, on one end, Deacon has clearly taken some steps today, right? This is this is he's, he's navigating the offense. He's commanding the offense. But you know, it's little plays like that where there's clear room for improvement. The interception going into half, clear room for improvement because here on the 12-yard line in third and goal, you, you really I just expect a run or an easy screen, something so they're not in a vulnerable position so they can kick the kick the field goal. And yeah, for Rutgers here, that's the key. You hold them to a field goal, you keep it a two-score game. Patterson to the six and it's fourth down. Yeah, Hawkeyes touchdown that would seal it but yeah. trying for three here with Stevens again it, it remains a two score game yep. with 605 and counting to go in the game. It's been tough 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 to move this football against the the Hawkeye defense but you know, I just I can't help but to think now as we're in the fourth quarter that you know you turn on that tape Rutgers Ohio State last week that was a physical physical game. I wonder if some of that's carried over to the game today. 24 yard try is good. So Stevens three out of four field goals here tonight. And the Hawkeyes add on 15 nothing Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes. <laughs> 15 nothing still a two score game. Speaking of San it's been tough sledding though. Well, the Scarlet Knights here offensively tonight against this tough, Good tough there. Iowa defense. And the Hawkeyes seeking their eighth win overall and fifth in league play. Vital, vital drive. 
Wimsett throws deep in. It's intercepted. Picked off by Quinn Schulte. Schulte cuts back. Schulte from behind is tackled inside the 10. The former walk-on, Quinn Schulte, the Cedar Rapids native with his third career pick. Weijin on the sweep lost his footing. I've never been fast enough to be too fast for my own feet and trip myself up, but I think that's what happened there. He was going. Weijin, the transfer from Iowa Western Community College as Wimsett took a chance downfield and picked off. See the frustration on his face there, understandably so. But you know, that's a face a lot of opposing quarterbacks may make when they play this Phil Parker led Iowa Hawkeye defense. It's Patterson. It's an empty formation here. Really, if, if Iowa kicks a field goal, that'd make it an 18 point three score game. Caleb Brown slips free. Brown, end zone, touchdown, Iowa. First of his career. It's to get the play go going, Caleb Brown makes a guy miss, and then it's a party in the end zone. And for defensive guys, that, that's a huge point of pride. If you can pitch a shutout, it's extremely challenging to do, so that's going to be their focus. Which would tie him for third most all-time in conference history with Bo Schembechler. Wimsett incomplete intended for Samuel Brown the fifth Nick Jackson these linebackers they're they're run stuffers they're downhill they're great tackling in space and the next step to prove your worth as a linebacker is good in coverage now the appeal for Jackson to join this defense was there in the portal you think about Iowa you talked about Iowa the history with tight ends but also the linebackers Jack Campbell, Seth Benson, why not be part of that tradition? Josie Jewell. And a few more, many more. Wimsett, incomplete, looking for strong. It's third down. You have to think it's four down territory here, right? No doubt. And kind of a fitting flag there. This has been an issue all night. Offense, number 65. Many coming on third down. Good point. Buckeyes bring four. Wimsett throws incomplete. Ninth punt of the game for Flint Appleby. And DeGene, fair catch. And likely the only one that will win again this week. Caleb Johnson. Right now, pitching a shutout. Boy, would he love it for the game to finish that way. Johnson inside the 25 and shoulder down near the 20. Caleb Johnson had no carries last week, and when Kirk Ferentz was asked about that earlier this week, he said other guys have just performed better. Lee Sean Williams and Jazzy and Patterson, but Johnson, he's got more reps here tonight of making the most of it. You know, the funny thing is, is Kate Piper, the freshman left guard, he was pulling to the right. Hayden Large, the fullback, he was pulling to the right. That looked like a counterplay to the right. That Caleb Johnson just kind of aborted it and went all the way backside. And guess what? That's just a good way to feel the hole, not be a football robot and just feel it and then go to going to make the play. You see the speed as it just highlighted there, Corey. Johnson. Legs go in the air, shoulder down to the ground to the 15 yard line. I'll get back to Phil Parker and. Go back to your playing days there, Jake, when Michigan would go up against Iowa. What would stand out in meetings in film about a trademark, a standard going up against a Phil Parker-led defense on a given Saturday? The conversation was, is you have to be mentally engaged for four quarters. If you make any mistake, if you put your, your team in a vulnerable position, 
Phil Parker and his unit was going to take advantage of it. You knew that all 11 guys were going to be smart. They were never, rarely if ever, going to be out of position. And no matter what you threw at them, trick plays, formations, whatever, Phil Parker's defense was going to be able to handle it. It was always such a dogfight to try to find any type of breathing room versus that defense. And really, like, you know, how do you do it? How do you get there? There's some defensive coordinators that have a bunch of exotic pressures and crazy packages and do a bunch of crazy stuff. I, you know, when I think of Phil Parker, I don't want to call it a simple defense, but they do what they do. They don't really waver from it, but they just do it better than anybody. And, you know, maybe a piece of that is the type of guy that they bring here to Iowa City. You know, Quinn Schulte, a good example. He said he's a coach on the field. No one watches more tape than him. Former walk on. With Schulte and Johnson hit out of bounds by Flip Dixon. Let's see what they do here. Do they kick the field goal or do they try to get the first down and finish this game out? And it looks like offense is going to yeah. stay on the field. Again, Iowa a win here tonight to clinch a share of the West. Doesn't clinch a spot in Indy, but clinches at least a share of the Western Division. First down to the five. Brian Ferentz had a rough go for many years now for Brian Ferentz. Informed last month he will not be brought back for 2024. Much maligned coordinator here in Iowa City shaking hands with players and staff members. He thought he called a really good game tonight and the offense had one of its better nights in a long long time. Over 400 yards now of offense. Yeah. And, and let's make something very clear that does not happen against this Rutgers defense. This is a top 10 defensive unit. We'll see where the rankings change after this week. But you know Brian Ferentz man he, the statement he made was all class. You know, we talk to the players, the respect and love they have for him. And really, as, you've, as we've highlighted multiple times, in a tight race in the West, every little detail matters. Brian Ferentz has done an excellent job getting his team schemed up, making the picture clean for Kirk Ferentz. And there it is, Corey. 194 career wins. Big Ten history, third, joining Bo Schembechler, third all-time. Woody Hayes at 205, Amos Alonzo Stagg.